alcohol distribution. I think it's still Pennsylvania and Virginia, don't they still, I think the state still owns all the, all the lot, the uh, liquor, liquor stores. stores the AB, ABC yeah. stores, I believe they call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, with that, uh, have you seen a gap in uh, any of the policy that's been crafted for the different states. One person who's a defense attorney told me here something that he hadn't heard anybody speak about is what happens if you're driving under the influence of marijuana. And I think that was something some states have now since corrected. But have there been any other public policy gaps when they draft this legislation? Well, that one's an interesting one, Chris, because I think um, the technology is still catching up with the needs there. So there's some places that I think have tried to basically have a policy where uh, if you're, you're pulled over and suspected that you're intoxicated from the use of marijuana, that they'll test you. But, you know, marijuana isn't the same as alcohol, which passes out of your system in a relatively short time. Marijuana can stay in your system for, I think it's up to a month in some way, shape, or form. Now, can you detect intensity of it through some other method? I, I, I think you can, but it's not perfect. And, and so there's still all this, and I, I have to be, can't be honest that I don't know exactly the now, people can get All tickets in Illinois of driving driving while intoxicated. It's more rare. It's harder to enforce, That's but it right. does happen. It does happen. And, and, driving and, while intoxicated? Yeah. And I think, I think the standard is actually um, they're trying to shift it so it's very high that if there's any level of detectable marijuana that you can get, you know, you can get busted for it. But that, that is problematic because, especially as we're talking about medical marijuana, patient who might be driving in a situation where they weren't intoxicated, but they're clearly going to have some in their system, that's an enforcement problem. So we're going to need testing. To answer your question directly, we're going to need testing capabilities to make sure that it's sort of time sensitive. And I, my understanding is we're not quite there yet. Well, on the civil law side, if marijuana is legalized, but a specific employer prohibits it, the police, truck driving, airline pilots, and somebody does it on their own time, but it's still in their system um, because they just, the, the policies, I don't, we don't allow people who use these drugs. Will that cause problems for these employers? I think so. I, I, I suspect, and, and you probably know this world undoubtedly better than I do, Frank, but I suspect that a lot of this is going to be worked out in the courts. Like, it's a little bit fuzzy. I, I think that employers have the right to not, employers still have the right to administer drug tests under Illinois' medical marijuana law, but patients are also going to have some rights under this law. And, and where where does one overlap? I, I think it's a little well, bit Well, would you fuzzy. want your pilot to be smoking Clearly marijuana? Clearly not. Clearly or not. Or your truck driver or your school bus driver or your... So you probably are not going to be... I'm, I'm guessing because the way it's going to Because I remember in the, in the Exxon uh, Valdez um, crash, the, the, the pilot of the boat... The uh, captain boat was actually they tested for marijuana in their system. I thought oh, it was drunk. Yeah, I was but saying, I thought it was alcohol. Yeah, pretty sure it was alcohol. But I think there wasn't there cannabis also. I don't actually remember that, but I, I remember the drunk part. Yeah, he he blew like you know way over the. the so well, limit. alcohol is legal, so one could theoretically drink in their off time, but they can't drink at work. But could you, you, you don't and think... clearly people are still drunk sometimes when they go to work. Right, like, which, which does cause accidents. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> and, and, it's, it's and, and should be stopped, I would think, especially in certain areas. You know, lawyers have their three martini lunch, which lawyers are not, though, driving your kids to school or driving an airplane. And so maybe arguably they shouldn't have like the three martini lunch. Just responsible lunch. for whether people go to prison once that's in a while. Right, that's right. That's a small all. thing. So, uh, but, but I think that something that's mechanical operated, I think, is something separate. I, I think you're right. I, I don't know anybody who's arguing with that. Like, I don't know anybody who thinks that. Uh, CTA train. I did have a friend should, in college who claimed the more marijuana he smoked, the better reflexes he had. Well, <laughs> there are always those. Yeah, did better on tests or whatever. There are those who claim that. But as a matter of public policy, I don't think that's going to hold up. That's so, true. so, what does the medical marijuana law look like in Illinois for those who are unfamiliar? It's pretty restrictive. Okay. I mean, relative to the other medical marijuana states, which I think I, I'm losing count. I think Illinois was the 20th. There may have even been another one that passed it since then. Between medical marijuana and gay marriage, it seems like this stuff is falling almost by the day. Is it linked? No, it's not. There's a little joke there, a little it, humor. But, but you know, it is, it is linked in a certain way that these are old taboos, okay. I think, that generationally people see it differently and that they're both falling. Although and, and some Republican kind of states and Republican time. governors then have relatively socially conservative constituencies uh, and are otherwise opposed to same-sex marriage have promoted 
you have seen a number of Republican governors who have pushed, um, who are opposed to same-sex marriage, who have pushed uh, either medical marijuana or some kind of decriminalization or legalization of marijuana in sure. New Mexico, uh, in Colorado, even before it was passed, um, in some of the in Nevada, in some of the we in the western states. You see Republicans who are otherwise socially conservative on some of those other key issues that have been pushing. Uh, some liberalization of marijuana. Again, there's there's kind of a a spectrum, which is medical marijuana, decriminalization of marijuana, and then all outright legalization of marijuana. Yeah, I mean, you know, if we want to if we want to make this conversation even more complicated, we can say at the same time, gun laws have been getting loosened across right. the country, so it's actually easier to access a gun, which is conserv typically seen as a conservative cause. So I don't mean to suggest that these things are all directly intertwined, but I think that there is, you know, we're seeing right now very quickly some generational change with some of these uh, long-standing social issues that were just, you know, it was a third rail to even talk about marijuana, any kind of liberalization 10, 15 years ago, um, certainly 20 years ago. And I think the same is true for gay marriage. And then once it started happening, it's kind of like the dominoes are falling. And that, that I'm not saying is it a libertarian? Issues, except for Is a libertarian growing theme then? Especially yeah, in the I Western so. states with some of the Republican governors who supported it? Well, libertarianism is definitely affecting criminal justice issues and drug policy issues mm -hmm. because you have this wraparound effect where you have uh, a lot of liberals, liberal Democrats, and a lot of libertarian Republicans who are kind of have reached the same place where they're saying not only do we want to let people use marijuana recreationally if they so choose, the libertarian argument, but you know, it's costing us a lot of money to, to prosecute this stuff and to lock people up. And our, our prison systems, our jail and prison systems have just been bursting at the seams and it's time to think about being smart on crime instead of tough on crime. And so there's a real shift there. You, you asked a, a few minutes ago about the medical marijuana law in Illinois. I didn't want to say, you know, didn't want to totally forget about that. Um, the bottom line is there are, I think, about 40 different medical conditions okay. under which you can qualify for a card, but you have to jump through a number of hoops. Okay. So it's actually pretty rich. Asthma? Be, I don't think asthma is on there. Overweight? No. Okay, I'm striking You're out. You're trying. <laughs> pain, that's the one that so many, that's like the vast majority well, of medical Well, certainly smoking marijuana might not be good for asthma. Okay. But perhaps the... You would think, but I, I actually think you can probably qualify under, in California, all you need is basically a doctor to say he needs this. And that's not a list of, uh, a, a preset list of conditions. But well, then the medical is. marijuana becomes kind of like a joke because it's a quasi-legalization because you pay the doctor. The yeah, doctor absolutely. Will let you, you know, if you've been uh, to Venice Beach, right. it's just like I heard you can the pay boardwalk. a doctor forty dollars and he'll give you. They'll walk down the street clothes. and there's a guy saying, "The doctor is in. Come see the doctor." And so it's just an invitation, and it's it's yeah. kind of a it's just kind of a ruse, you know. But I, you know, we were talking about this before we started taping. In some ways, I think this is like just the inner medical marijuana. To be clear, I think has very clear purpose for serious patients who mm -hmm. need it, and there are people who who think that it really helps them. So that is a separate issue. But policy-wise, in terms of looking at marijuana, I think that it is viewed by many as an intermediate step, as a way to kind of dip our toes in the water, to see that this is, we can do this without society collapsing, and then we can perhaps talk about the criminal side of it. There was a well. documentary on CNN I saw a few months ago about uh, the Colorado brothers who grow marijuana. And as a young girl, I mean, when I say young, younger than the age of 12, but they strain out the specific uh, drug that she needs to help her with like seizures. And it, those type of things are actually changing some of my staunch draconian fire and brimstone policies as it relates to marijuana. So I, I, I think, you know, the cases out there, like you said, is probably somewhat of a, of a test well, stage. Well, much yeah. of the medical marijuana is not smoking marijuana. That's right. They're, it's they're a THC totally different strains. pill yeah. or exactly. tincture or whatever, whatever form it may be in. People who have MS, they want, they want a certain strain that's going to basically help them with, you know, their condition of, of having the shakes. I'm not saying that there's a, uh, I can't think of it right now, but the tremors and stuff. And so, you know, they want their, a certain strain that's going to help them with their nervous conditions, right. you know, central nervous system conditions. And, um, and, and others are going to want something that's more psychoactive, you know, for, for their needs. And so I think that's one of the things that is going potentially to be possible is you kind of unleash 
the uh, the technology and the science side of this to see, you know, what medical uses there actually. Although the be. true medical uses of marijuana are rather limited. I mean, it's not a panacea. If some people recommend, I was looking at a newspaper in Hawaii when I was there recently, and it said, you know, marijuana uh, cures cancer. It does not. It <laughs> well, you're in Hawaii, you don't need marijuana because <laughs> you're living in Hawaii. Well, <laughs> also, well, mar Bad marijuana joke, though is, is de facto legalized in marijuana. It's yeah. not legalized by law, but nobody enforces right. it. Right. So you can go to North Shore, Hawaii, you know, where all the surfers are, and literally, you know, I could go walk up to somebody and, and get a joint. Nobody's going to bust me. There's no narcs. You know, nothing like that. So there are states where the enforcement is limited of anything. That's right. It's true. You know. It's true. And, and Hawaii is one of those states because I've seen it either on Waikiki or on that kind of bohemian surfer culture of the of the North Shore. Um, but the the true scientific healing powers of marijuana are somewhat limited. I mean, it does help with um, nausea. It does help with appetites. It, it does help with relaxation. Um, and so, and and so there are there are certainly elements. It doesn't it helps with pain. A lot of people say right. Yeah. Well, and the, well, the relaxation and the nausea are interrelated with the pain. Now, what what might even be more interesting? There was a claim again. It was in this very pro drug newspaper that I saw in an ice cream shop of all places that the tincture of of the marijuana or the THC in the liquid form on your skin had curative properties. And I think as a side, a side of, uh, of the legalization of marijuana, you have the byproduct of hemp and the hemp industry as a possible boon to the economy. Yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things that frankly I think is just outright crazy is that even, you know, in, in this uh, kind of what I and others just would describe as reefer madness where it was like everything associated with marijuana was evil and we have to criminalize it. Like even industrial hemp has been you know, is criminal to, to grow. And, and I think in Illinois, there have been attempts through the years to try to, uh, you know, let farmers downstate grow industrial hemp, which has some specific uses, but is, uh, has been banned as well. And right. so it's, that, that's just one of those things where it's like, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, can you, know? you talk about the economics of, uh, of in mer medical marijuana and maybe uh, converting hemp for industrial use? I know Frank talked about revenues for states going up and it's too early in Colorado. But what about who's gonna grow it? Can we get medical marijuana in Illinois from Colorado? Uh, does it have to be grown here? Who are the people that can grow it? Where can it be grown? Can I? Can I open up a lot somewhere on East 130th Street near my house? Good questions, good questions. Uh, well, first of all, all of it's supposed to be very strictly regulated. You're not supposed to be able to get it from another state. It's supposed to be grown here. Um, I think the medical marijuana law authorizes 22 um, cultivation centers around the state, which is average of, what, one per... Every uh, five counties or so. Yeah, something think. like that. Um, and then there's, I think, 40, um, supposed to be 40 uh, dispensaries that are going to be allowed around the state, which is a pretty small amount, actually. Like, if you've been to Denver, you've been to Los Angeles, you'd seen just the, the booming of the industry there. And so there was a, a real attempt here to try to keep it very limited and, and small in scale. So do you have to have pretty deep pockets to get involved in this business? I think so, yeah. That, that's what people so who are who've gotten into it. huge startup costs. Absolutely, because... In addition to the usual costs of starting a business, um, there's a high risk here. This is only, or at this point in time, officially just a pilot program. It's only for four years, so you're going to have to invest in something. You don't know how, how long you're going to be able to recoup your investment. Um, second of all, marijuana, of course, is still prohibited by federal law, so there's uh, always a chance, even if it's remote, that the feds could come in and bust up your operation. Although the current Fed policy has been not to do so. Well, they have done so. They've even done it in Colorado recently. I mean, the policy is very specific. They've, they've basically said, um, they've written memos, which doesn't, of course, have the binding force of law, but they've written memos from the Justice Department that say, if you're complying with state law and you're a small-time operator, it has nothing to do with cartels or black market, you're not selling to people who don't qualify, we're, you're not a priority. That's basically the way they put it. Um, but... You're still on the list, but you're not you're a priority. And you know, there's going to be a new administration in, in two and a half years, and you never know what they're going to do. They could write a new memo or do something different. I, I don't think it's going to go back that way. I think the public would be outraged, actually. But you know, I'm just saying that there's That's that chance. It's part of the risk. If you're talking about investing something in a business, I think an additional, additionally, when you're getting in the marijuana business, you're going to be talking about extraordinary security costs. Um, 
you know, it's insurance. going to be insurance and everything else. Banks won't take your money at this point in time. It's a cash business. Um, and so you I can't write checks for medical marijuana. I don't, th I don't know how that's going to work. I okay. think it's going to be a cash business because I think they eventually can, they will do something though. They're going to have to yeah. eventually, but right now it, this is kind of the wild west policy wise. And so you hear stories about, I just was reading someplace, I think it was in Colorado where, you know, the guy basically has to figure out how to take his bags of cash into the bank and he staggers it. So he does it a different day each week and it takes a different route in because he doesn't want to get jacked and all this kind of thing. And this is just a guy who's running a successful legal I think, business. I think they have concealed carry in, in Colorado, so he'll probably be okay. <laughs> well, they have it now in all 50 states since we're the last one. But yes, you're right. Well, now, there's, I think there's an upside or a benefit of legalization of legalized marijuana or even legalized medical marijuana of a better purity of marijuana because a lot of times kids get marijuana, people put LSD in with the weed and then, you know, kids starts tripping, jumping off a building or people do all sorts of crazy things. But I think that if it's legalized, I think if it's, if the purity is there, that we can make it safer. Because you do hear these stories of kids smoking, it's not the weed itself, so it's not marijuana, the substance of the marijuana, it's the other things they add in there. You're right. And, and just think about this. I mean, even if it is just marijuana, I mean, you don't know what kind of bacteria or if there's some sort of mold that's grown in there. I mean, it's, it's a plant, right? you know, and, and, and even mold itself could be stuff. psychotropic. It can, and it can, you know, you could, you could get some sort of lung virus or something or, you know, out of it. I mean, um, my point is just that I think you're right, Frank, is that, uh, the idea is, is that it would be a safer product. And you have some liability. So if you did get some bad weed, theoretically, as a lawyer, I think about it, you, know, you could sue. You know, if you got weed that was mixed in with bacteria or mold. Well, or the legal industry is hurting too, Frank. So I guess this could be good well, for Well, I don't know if the legal industry too. is hurting, but <laughs> these things are all through a prism of things. But but if some kid, some parent, their 16-year-old kid went to a party, overdosed on marijuana because they, somebody put LSD in there, who are you going to sue? The kids who had the party, if they were in the forest, who are you going to sue? The other kid who made the warm on it, you're going to sue the cartel, who are you going to sue? Yeah. So now at least you have, if there is an issue with bacteria, with mold, God forbid somebody put some other substance in there, now you have somebody that can be responsible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an official product. I assume at some point in time this goes forward that the FDA or somebody would, would regulate it just like they do with pharmaceuticals and food products and... Yeah, you, and also potency, because my understanding, marijuana today is far more exponentially potent than marijuana of yesteryear of the 1960s. You know, so the hippies and you know, and they used other stuff too. Clearly, just by watching the old Woodstock uh, um, videos. But you have um, more potent marijuana today than you did in yesteryear. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Clearly, there's different strains and types and all that. It doesn't it, mean people are using more. I mean. That's, that's well, it means true. that their potency is more. Sure. So theoretically, if they're selling it now, they could control the potency better so people aren't using some kind of potent marijuana. Super strain. Yeah, super strain that's <laughs> knocking them out for a day, you know. Yeah, and, it, you know, as, as this continues to open up, again, there's going to be more people getting into the business of developing new strains, too. And so there's going to be different different kinds of products out there. There's, there's beer that's, you know... That's really there's micro, all kinds of microbrews that are you know up seven eight percent alcohol and then still reserved exactly and then you know you can get Bud Light if I you prefer Trappist yeah. <laughs> well I know you don't have a PhD in botany but I do I have do a, I do have a question about the actual growing of marijuana and from my understanding I have a very limited knowledge of the subject but from my understanding it has to be in a warm climate climate correct yes I believe so so if it has to be grown here in Illinois. Has anything been talked about as far as the stockpiling or do you know what the shelf life is on marijuana? Because I can imagine a year from now, there's not going to be much marijuana being grown in Illinois as well. Uh, it'd be hydroponics. I think yeah. it's going to be mostly inside. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about facilities. That have Greenhouses. To be inside. Greenhouses, okay. essentially. And we're, because you want to regulate the climate. It's not just that it's hot or cold, but I think you need to regulate the climate. You need to okay. regulate the light and that sort of thing. This is a plant that's indigenous to. Uh, but even Mexico the better quality strains are. In greenhouses today, I, I, my understanding is. I think so, everywhere, yeah. yeah. So, now, I do think I think it's important, and you can comment on it from your own perspective, and I, I think it's easy to, just to tie it into alcohol, which and alcohol produces tons of social problems today. There's no doubt about it. I mean, things that maybe have changed since Prohibition, 
but there's still a lot of social problems because of alcohol. But I still think, and I, I support legalization of medical marijuana. I support decriminalization of medical marijuana because I just don't want to see a bunch of kids who just had one jo joint who are minority in, in the criminal justice system. I don't think that's productive. And when you do incarcerate them, they actually become worse criminals. That's the other problem. You're, now you're, that's your college kind criminal of Criminal university, yeah. yeah. So you know now they're getting in, inculcated in, in a, a criminal c culture and lifestyle. However, I still think we don't want a culture where marijuana becomes completely accepted. And now this is a cultural rather than a legal issue, because even if we have decriminalization or legalization and medical marijuana, which we already have, is we don't want everybody to smoking marijuana all day, every day. And I think that is important. Now, maybe the cultural issue is more in churches <coughs> and schools and families and non-governmental institutions, I don't know. But I, I don't think that most people would want a society where everybody's smoking marijuana. This isn't, I don't think people want a Rastafarian culture. Well, there are some who argue that we would be, it would be a better, happier place if that were the case. But yeah, I get your point. I, I, I honestly, I'm not, I'm personally not concerned about that. I, I think marijuana is addictive with very, very few people. Um, and, and does it happen? Do people get addicted to it? Sure. People get addicted to sex. They get addicted to eating. And we're not saying we should stop either of those either. Um, but those are necessary functions. Guy. Smoking marijuana is not a necessary function. Well, we, we eat and have sex for more than just necessary functions, but... But by uh, their nature, they're necessary. Sure, but, but by the way people use them, mostly it's unnecessary. We can go back and forth on this. My point is simply that I just don't think that most people are going to be high all the time. I, I think it... There will probably be, will be those problems. I suspect there, if marijuana were legal for recreational purposes, there would be a spike in use, at least in the short term. But I fundamentally don't think that, I don't think that most people who haven't been big stoners are suddenly going to become stoners. I just don't. I, I think what's more So you don't think people who is, weren't using marijuana are going to start using marijuana? I think it might happen, but I think it's more likely that you and I are at a party and we're, we're drinking beer or wine and someone's like, hey man, I just went to the store and got some really good, you know, purple Kush or whatever. Uh, would you like to pass this thing around with me? And, and you wouldn't necessarily be inclined before, but because of the way it was acquired and its availability, you might try it then. I, I, think, I think you're going to see probably These a lot more of that These are people, I think, stuff, that don't do something just because it's illegal. I would be one of them. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so I, that's what I'm saying. I think there will be some people, but I think marijuana is... Um, Look, most people age out of marijuana. Let's face it. A lot, most people who use it, they may use it for a period of their life, and then they're done with mm -hmm. it. They get busy. They don't want to bother going to a I dealer I could bring or some people to you that would be contrary to that point, but that's for another sure. Okay, of but course. can you speak to the international experience? So people say, well, you have the proliferation of marijuana, so that means more people are going to use. What about some of those societies that allow marijuana? Can you just speak to that? Because I'm sure your research is touched on those different countries. Well, I don't think it's fully legal anywhere or hasn't been anywhere in the world. Okay. I mean, um, unofficially, of course, there are a number of places where it's been Even in the like Netherlands, accepted. I found that it's not illegal. It's technically, it's technically illegal right, it's in illegal. the Netherlands, right. right. Okay. Now, um, uh, in South America, why can't I think of the country just Uruguay, okay. just legal, just came one out and legalized marijuana. And so that's really the first place that is just you know, nationwide has legalized marijuana. Um, but we have other places that have essentially decriminalized it and it's been a cult, been, you Jamaica. know, acceptably, culturally accepted, exactly, for a long time. So, you know, I, 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 I think that the problems that exist in Jamaica don't have that much to do with marijuana so much as colonialism and poverty, but that's where I sit, so, you know. Sounds like you got a good expose coming for the reader. Go down to Jamaica and check those things out. I think I'll pitch that story to my editor tomorrow. All I need is just a little money. A little money on a plane ticket. Exactly. But while you're, it's true that maybe because Jamaica does have high rates of crime, high rates of poverty, um, it, there's uh, there's subcultures that have strong uh, streams of violence in Jamaica. I mean, there's some very violent areas in Jamaica and incidents of violence, but. Couldn't it be argued that the, the culture of kind of being relaxed, ones that say lazy, is part and parcel with the marijuana smoking? I, I, Hanging if out. If you're asking you me, know. I don't think so. I mean, there are people who are lazy, who are stoners, who don't do, every, do anything all day. <laughs> and there are also people, when I, you know, 
drive through the west side, there were people lined up at some of the liquor stores at 10 in the morning waiting for it to open. Um, and and I, I, I think that's a, a broader set of social problems. And, and some people are intrinsically lazy. Other people are beaten down. Other people don't know where to find work. They've given up years ago, so forth and so on. These are complicated social problems that I think it would be a big mistake to boil it down to marijuana or alcohol. It's like we were talking about earlier. People tend to self-medicate, so the problems end up being intertwined at some level, but I don't think that one necessarily causes the other. I think that's a big mistake to make. With medical marijuana, I believe the chief sponsor was uh, Lou Lang from Skokie, which sometimes is interesting to see who the sponsors of bills are, and I don't never put marijuana and Lou Lang together. But uh, have you had any conversation with him? Is there anything that you can tell us about his desire to see this become law and some things that may concern him or some positive out, out, um, effects that he looks forward to seeing? Well, I, I certainly want to want to, wouldn't want to speak to, for him, but mm -hmm. I have interviewed him a number of times about this. And he, you're right, he pushed this for years. It was like one legislative session after another. He would bring this to the table and it would seemingly always come up short, although it kept finally getting just a little bit more support, just a little closer and so on. Well, Tony Preckwinkle, so president of the county board, has been uh, one of the larger advocates for it. Well, that's different. That's she's talking about the criminal penalties. But just she's in terms of the change, medical marijuana. Well, but she's talked about the criminalizing marijuana, even legalizing marijuana. I think since she's been to the most vocal, higher level elected official that's talked about the subject. Just in terms of the change in the number of politicians who are kind of supportive of something. I think you're right in terms of just putting on the table like we need to change marijuana policy. Yes, she's been huge, but. Chris's question specifically about medical marijuana. Lou Lang's the guy who pushed this across the finish line. He's been advocating for it for years. And he's quick to tell you that he's never had marijuana in his life, never used marijuana in any form in his life, which I think is an unnecessary um, thing to put out there. But he wants to make that point that for him, this is about medical marijuana. He, he so far, I think, has been very cautious about commenting or talking about the criminal issues, the broader policy issues, because he's once, he's clear this is about helping patients for him. Mick, we're almost out of time, so I just wanted to thank our viewing audience for watching. Thanks to my co-host, Chris Anderson. Thank you. And thank you to McDumpkey for being on our show and discussing the issues of medical marijuana, the criminalization of marijuana, legalization of marijuana, and uh, marijuana policy in, genu in general. Thank you to, for our viewing audience for watching. Goodbye, and God bless. We managed to filibuster a whole hour away. <laughs>